Morning Church. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas still. All of those things right now. My name is Phil Woodson along with the Reverend Gary Heaton. It is good to be in worship with you this morning. As we enter into worship in 2021, this is the first Sunday of a new year. And in keeping with that, uh, this morning we are going to be leading you in a Wesley Covenant service. This is a traditional service for Methodist people as we renew our commitment to God and to one another for ministry in the new year. I want to thank everybody for their efforts and agility in the last year uh, as we pivoted and tried to continue in ministry during the time of COVID. Especially, I want to thank those folks who came out and helped decorate the church for Christmas. Uh, it was beautiful. I want to let you know it's, it's okay now. to If you took out some decorations and put them up, I invite you to retrieve them and put them back where we found them so they will be easily retrievable in 2021 Christmas. So thank you for your efforts, and it's okay now to go ahead and undecorate the church for Christmas. Uh, as we begin our worship service, I'd like to also welcome the Reverend Dr. Ted Smith to our service. He will be bringing the message this morning. So as we begin worship this morning for the Wesleyan Covenant service, we tried to do a recording with members of church council uh, with church leadership, which include the Wesleyan Covenant prayer. The sound didn't quite turn out. So this morning, Gary and I are going to share images of, of that attempt over Zoom, but also going to lead all of you now as the call to worship in this back and forth together. Gary will read the leader parts and I will read the part of the people and ask you to join me all as ministers of the gospel. So I invite you now to participate in this Wesley Covenant. <clears throat> Let us gathered here before the Lord, now in covenant, commit ourselves to Christ as his servants. Let us give ourselves to him so that we may fully belong to him. Jesus Christ has left us with many services to be done. Some of these services are easy and honorable, but some are difficult and disgraceful. Some line up with our desires and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we please both Christ and ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Jesus Christ, we offer you this prayer. Let me be your servant. Let me follow your commands. I will no longer follow my own desires. I give myself completely to your will. The power and strength to live as true servants is given to us in Christ. We accept the place and work that he gives us, acknowledging that he alone will be our reward. I am not my own. I am yours alone. Make me into what you will. Rank me with those you will. Put me to use for you. Put me to suffering for you. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be lifted high for you. Let me be brought low for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. With a willing heart, I freely give everything to your pleasure and disposal. Christ is Savior to those who are his true servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. To be his servant is to consent fully to his will. Christ accepts nothing else. Christ will be in all or he will be nothing. And all God's people said, Amen.
I'm going to be reading the Old Testament reading today. Um, I'll be reading from the New, uh, New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And the verses are Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I'm going to bring them from the land of the north, and garner them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty. This is the word of the Lord. This reading is from Ephesians 3 through 14, 1, 3 through 14. And I'm reading out of the teeny tiny Bible. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to his to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, <clears throat> according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Greetings in Christ's name to the Charlottesville First United Methodist Church faith community. I appreciate this opportunity to be a part of your first 2021 worship service. With the year 2020 in the rearview mirror, but lingering into 2021, I pray that this new year will be a year of recovery and renewal. A natural entry into 2021 year of recover and renewal is provided for Christians through both scripture and the Wesleyan Covenant Service. The Methodist Wesleyan Covenant Service has been provided for Christians and has been used for more than 265 years now. So let us begin our covenant renewal for 2021 and focus beginning with the scripture from 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 1 through 3, and this is what the scripture of the Lord says. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, 
the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priest and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in this book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so, folks, we've already made and abandoned our New Year's resolutions, even though it's only three days into the new year. Others have long since forgotten or even dismissed their 2020 Lenten season sacrifices. I say this not to criticize those practices, but to emphasize that the Wesleyan covenant renewal and the covenant renewal in the Book of Kings is very different from some of these other seasonal sacrifices. The covenant of renewal is a gift, and its purpose and meaning are much deeper than things like New Year's resolutions. Let's begin by looking more closely at the words in 2 Kings. The leaders were all called together in the same way that we are now calling everyone together, calling the church together. The people recognized that they were in a holy and special place, and the word was read for all to hear. And the word was read so that that would be a common commitment. I point out verse 2 and the people recognizing a holy and special place because we're now in a scenario where many, especially you, my first church friends who are watching, have a new and different holy and special place. For many years and decades and for centuries now, the holy place has been the church. That's been our understanding, being in the church building. But now our holy and special place has become not just the church, but our homes and other places where we experience worship and we watch worship. It means that when you're in your home now and you're watching worship services, you are now in a different place. It is holy ground. The time and the place of renewal has come through the word in 2 Kings. And it's come, and I think of some of my Baptist upbringing, where we talk about that thing we call the backslide. The backslide is where you fall away from spiritual practices and from religious activity. Well, in 2 Kings, it's presented as a renewal and a covenant renewal because in Kings, the people had fallen away. Just as sometimes in today's life, we fall away from covenants. And so it's, it's a new commitment. It's not just words. It's not just Bible readings. It's real and it's heartfelt and it's deep within our souls. And it, it should come as a kind of passion with conviction. It's a pledge. And so that's why it's not like a New Year's resolution that's forgotten maybe three days or 30 days or even 60 days. It's a covenant for a lifetime. And it's renewed for this point in time. The words of the scripture are brought to life in practical and tangible and understandable ways, giving teaching so that this covenant can rule, renewal can be a kind of action, recognized not just as a special holy place, your, your house as your holy ground, but recognizing that these words are calling us not just to hear, but to respond. You know what scripture says, to not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And so the nature of the covenant is this. In 2 Kings, the covenant is a spiritual covenant. It's a relationship covenant between the people and God with prayerful God language. 
It's a heartfelt covenant. As I say, with a kind of con uh, compassion and a kind of conviction. It's from the center of your being when it's a heartfelt covenant. It's an emotional covenant. Something we believe in, something we feel, and it's a, a driving force to live it out. The covenant is also a hungering covenant, a thirst and a longing. The words of the Wesley Covenant Renewal Service are words that we really can mean when we say them. Here's one example. It's a prayer. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it to you, Lord, and all to your pleasure and disp disposal. I have prayed this prayer. And in fact, I've not only prayed this prayer, but before praying the words of this prayer from the Wesley Covenant Renewal Service, I've often looked at it and thought, now, will I mean it this time? Will I understand it? Will I be committed to it? Can I really say, Lord, put me to doing and put me to suffering and mean it? Can I say, let me be employed for you or laid aside and mean it? Can I say, let me be full or let me be empty, because I know you understand what it means to say, I'm feeling empty. And so are those words we can say in a prayer and mean it? Well, the covenant service gives us a chance not only to say it and to mean it, but to say it as a kind of humble confession. There are other words in the covenant service that include this humble confession. These words say, on bended knees, I accept Christ as the only new and living way. And sincerely, I join and myself in this covenant with Christ. Oh, blessed Jesus, I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind and naked, unworthy even to wash your feet I do here with all my power accept you as my Lord, and I renounce my own unworthiness. I vow that you are Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you as my only guide. Friends, you can hear that this is a covenant that calls for thought word, and deed in the commitment. It's a covenant that calls for repentance, confession, being humbled and bowed down before God before we take on the act of recommitting. It's an internal and an external commitment. It's a mental and emotional commitment of submission. It's also a calling forth to, to be the real presence of God that is within us, to show the world that presence of God within us. It's a time to be honest about our shortcomings when we make this kind of commitment. It's a time to receive an offer that calls us to be our best selves. This is a covenant that actually gives us the opportunity to sever and to stop those things from a repentance standpoint, that are harmful. It's a time to recognize injury that has been done, a time to extend and receive forgiveness. So yes, it is spiritual in nature first. It's a time to be thankful as well. Friends, in this 2021 year, there be there may be very little we'll have control over. There may be many things from 2020 that linger into the 2021 year. The one thing we do have control over, the one thing we can determine is our spiritual future, our faith relationship through Christ, 
In this 2021 year, we can be intentional. Intentional in a covenant that reclaims, that renews, and receives. In Jesus' name, amen. We now have time to offer our prayers to God. Included in the prayers that follow is a litany that includes time for you to offer your own prayers, in silence or aloud. Let us come to God in prayer. Beloved God, ever creating and renewing this world and all who dwell therein, we come to you in this new year with new hope and old fear, new challenges and old conflicts, new longing and old grief. O oh Lord, increase our faith, strengthen our trust in you that we may step fearlessly into this new year confident in your ever-present guidance. Open our minds, liberate our hearts, and strengthen our spirits that we may live into the fullness of your desires for us. We come to you in prayer for one we remember today. We come to you in prayer for the leaders of this world. We come to you in prayer for all who work for justice and peace. We come to you in prayer for one who is hurting and frightened. We come to you in prayer for all who care for the sick. We come to you in prayer for those who have died. We come to you in prayer for those who mourn. We come to you in prayer with our own need. Most loving God, you gather the perplexed and seek the lost. Shelter those caught in evil. Turn the hearts of evildoers, free those in bondage, strengthen those who struggle to survive. Be the power and passion of those who work for justice. We ask all this in the strong name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now friends, Go into the world and into this new year with a covenant in word, thought, and deed. Mm -hmm.